What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. Now, I wanna talk about psilocybin. Now, if you guys have been following the blog, which you should because there's content being piled in there daily, good stuff that I think will really help you make decisions, whether you're treating patients or you're a patient yourself. And I just love talking about psilocybin because I just love getting all the clicks and all the people you know, responding to my stuff, of course. But <laughs> in all seriousness, I've said it before and I continue to say it, I don't think psilocybin is as breakthrough of a treatment for depression as we're making it out to be. I certainly do not believe it will cure people's depression because I know a lot of people who have personally used the drug, right? And guess what? They have to use the drug again to maintain the benefits that they may have gotten from it. So I'm not sure it's going to cure people's depressions. I don't believe that. And it certainly hasn't been proven in randomized controlled trials. However, it doesn't stop people from publishing articles like the one we're going to talk about here. So this article, The Effect of Psilocybin versus Escitalopram on Depression Symptom Severity in Patients with Moderate to Severe Major Depressive Disorder, an observational six-month follow-up of a phase two double-blind randomized controlled trial. Now, that's a mouthful. That's a whole lot of stuff right there. And what we can say here is that we'll go through the findings and see what the extended observation period also tells us about psilocybin and escitalopram in treating depression. So let's go through the key points. So first of all, how was this study designed? Well, it was a six month follow-up to a phase two double-blind randomized controlled trial. Now you guys should know that randomized controlled trials are the double-blind placebo controlled trials are the best, right? We really want a high level of data to compare these things initially to placebo. Obviously in this case, we're not comparing to placebo, we're comparing to another antidepressant but still it's randomized, it's double blind, that's important. Now, they wanted to compare the effects of psilocybin, a psychedelic compound, and escitalopram, a common serotonin reuptake inhibitor, on depression symptoms in patients with moderate to severe major depressive disorder. So we have people with moderate to severe, which is, again is, is important because we don't want people with mild to moderate depression these medications you know, may help, but it wouldn't be a very good indicator of how it's gonna work in the people with the most serious cases. Now, the participants, the patients had moderate to severe major depressive disorder, they were randomly assigned to either receive psilocybin or escitalopram. Both treatments were administered in a controlled clinical setting as they should be for a randomized controlled trial. And the primary outcome was depression symptom severity as measured by the QIDS SR16, so the Quick Inventory of Depressive Symptomatology Self-Report Scale at various points during this trial, including baseline and follow-up treatment. So let's look at the results because that's what everybody cares about, right? One of the things with, I think, psilocybin and these drugs is that people really just want to feel better. And they don't really care that much about what the science says. If somebody says psilocybin can make you feel better and help your depression, well then, I want to take it, right? That's the mentality that I think a lot of people have. So let's look at the results. So both groups showed improvement in their depressive symptoms, but the psilocybin group had a greater reduction in the symptoms compared to the escitalopram group. The effects of psilocybin were found to be more rapid and sustained over the six month period. And that's important because our current medications don't have a sustained effect. Psilocybin provided a sustained benefit over a six month follow up. When we look at remission and response rates, a higher proportion of patients in the psilocybin group achieved remission and clinically significant response compared to those in the escitalopram group. We also want to know, of course, about safety and side effects. So both treatments were generally well tolerated. However, psilocybin was associated with transient, mild to moderate side effects mostly during the acute phase of treatment. So there'd be things like perceptual disturbances, for example, which is what you would expect when somebody is taking a psychedelic medication. So in conclusion, what does this study tell us? It tells us that psilocybin demonstrated more pronounced and longer lasting antidepressant effects compared to escitalopram at six month follow-up. 
This also suggests that psilocybin could be a viable alternative treatment for moderate to severe depression, but of course further research is necessary to confirm the long-term safety and efficacy of these drugs. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the video there, guys. Hopefully this treatment update was exciting for you. I think anytime we start talking about psychedelics and mental health, people get really giddy. And I'm a little more pessimistic, but I think I'm also a little more realistic about what these drugs are going to be able to do for people. And if you've watched the video all the way through, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me to know this content is helpful for you. Thanks again and see you in the next video.